All right, so it's a pleasure to, to have uh, Professor Gilho Lee uh, from uh, Postech in, in Korea to give this um, condensed matter um, seminar. Um, so Gilho is, is a very experienced physicist um, in, in all matters of you know, um, nanoscopic uh, and mesoscopic physics, in particular in um, hybrid superconducting um, platforms. So um, he um, he worked extensively, um, you know, through doing his postdoc um, in, in at Harvard, uh, and 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 uh, and as he returned to Korea, um, you know, worked uh, extensively on superconductivity and and in particular how these things can be um, combined um, with um, various uh, new types of physics, including you know out of equilibrium things, flow K things. I think he's going to be um, telling you about uh, uh, us about this mixture of Okay, Andrea of stuff um, in in actually a, a, a hybrid quantum platform. So, so without further ado, you know, let's uh, welcome um, our speaker for today, Professor Gilhoe. Thank you very much for being here. Hey, hey, thank you very much, Justin, uh, for the very kind inter introduction. And also very uh, healthy, happy to share with you guys with uh, with our recent re uh, research. So I'm mostly working on the experimental. Uh, um, research at low temperature and quantum transport. So I make nano devices uh, frequently with, with superconductor, but not necessarily, but also a, a measure at very low temperature and the millikelvin looking for some exotic quantum phenomena. So hopefully we, we based on some more fundamental physics, but I'm hoping that it can be applied at some point for this quantum technology era. So this work was mostly done by one of my graduate students, St. Park, and also theory part uh, with Professor Kyo Ang Cho, his uh, post uh, student, Wang Jun Lee, did a great job. Um, so uh, in general, as a condensed matter physicist, we, also, we always want to control the band structure because that governs the properties of the material. So obvious idea is to change the structure of the condensed matter so you can make carbon, uh, you can use the carbon to make a diamond, which is very good insulator to graphene, which is drop a semi-metal, which is very exotic uh, material. But these days people can also, you know, stacking same material with different angle, with twisting angle, making graphene into a superconductor and insulator, like mode insulator and uh, many interesting uh, properties. And people, of course, uh, pressurize the material and uh, induce this even room temperature superconductivity these days. And they can shine the lights and temporarily shake the structure of the material and induce some some uh, emergent uh, like, uh, out of equilibrium um, uh, phenomena, such, such as a plaquette, which I was I I'm gonna talk to you. Uh, I'm gonna talking about so. Back to undergraduate, uh, when you take a solid state physics, you uh, heard about the block state. When you have a free electron in the vacuum, you will have this uh, massive particle, a classical uh, mechanics uh, counterpart of this um, uh, square, uh, momentum square of uh, uh, dispersion. But when you have this periodic potential in real space, then you will end up having replication of this band uh, uh, this dispersion relationship along the k direction in the momentum space. Then, due to the interaction uh, with the atomic potential, this crossing point will open a gap. Uh, depending on how strong your ionic uh, Coulomb potential is, then that's basically your band structure. This is the band gap, and this is a band. Then the electron uh, moving inside of this condensed matter uh, system will follow this energy momentum dispersion relationship. And that's why we want to know about the band structure of the material. And also we want to, if it's possible, control the band structure. And this is called block uh, state. But in, there's a, a counterpart in the time domain as well. If you, uh, you, if you have a period potential in time, then basically that, uh, that's the light. Because light is an electromagnetic wave, AC voltage, basically, then the electric electron will feel this uh, time periodic uh, potential, uh, then your band structure will copy it along the energy direction rather than the momentum direction. This is this is my point of view, how we see this uh, flocket uh, state. This uh, replica replication of the band uh, structure uh, or the quantum state are called a flocket state. 
So this is uh, closely related to this uh, uh, conjugation variables like uh, position and the momentum versus uh, energy and the time, right? So in block state, the periodic potential in the real space uh, gives the replication along the k-axis. In time domain, the periodic potential in the time makes the quantum state copied along the energy direction. So it, it, as you already uh, learned in the solid state, uh, this uh, momentum is called quasi-momentum because this, is, this uh, block, uh, brilliant zone is copied and they are basically uh, describing the same physics. So we only focus on the first uh, Brillouin zone. So same thing happened uh, also exists in this Floquet system as well. The energy is now called quasi energy. So this state and that state is actually not this, not different, but they basically a replication of that in the in this uh, Brillouin zone. Uh, I I don't know the name is really Brillouin zone, but that basically the Brillouin zone uh, counterpart in this time domain as well. So in general, people call it a Floquet block state, okay, in general. Um, so this Floquet is, uh, at least for me, uh, before this research, I didn't actually know much about it uh, because there are not many research done in, in this Floquet engineering or Floquet physics in the condensed matter system. Um, this Floquet uh, physics is uh, what, um, uh, is widely studied in the AMO physics uh, because they shine light on the atom, which is quantum uh, state. So they naturally come uh, have to think about this Floquet interaction. Uh, people even thought about making some topological system by uh, using this Floquet state. By, for example, you can shine some circularly polarized light, which breaks the time reversal symmetry. So maybe you can induce some topological state out of it. Um, in condensed matter system, there is a few, there's a few examples. Uh, for example, for, for the quantum information, you if you drive some uh, microwave uh, signal, which is time periodic, then you can replicate the quantum state as you want. So for example, the frequency will change the, the energy gap between this uh, uh, this state and also intensity of the light will change, control the spectral density of this copied state. Uh, so by tuning this uh, property of the light, you can control the frequency, intensity, or polarization. You can control the quantum system. Uh -huh. And yeah, so as I mentioned, you can, for example, if you have this trivial band insulator, uh, you can copy this uh, valence band up to the conduction making making it uh, overlap with conduction band and uh, applying circular polarized light, breaking time reversal symmetry and possibly open the topological gap, then you can make a topological insulator uh, by shining light. And even people thought about uh, braiding non-abelian uh, anions. So people have thought about this non-abelian anions from, from topological conductivity or the five half quantum fractional quantum state or helium three, there are many uh, physical flat form, but at the end of the day, they have to braid it or exchange it to perform some non-trivial quantum uh, gate for the topological quantum computer. So people always thought about this uh, braiding in the real space, but it doesn't have to be in the real space, it can be a parameter space. So this block and engineering can add uh, another dimension in this uh, parameter space to, braid in the parameter space. That's one uh, interesting idea uh, for me uh, when we think about this flock head. Um, but as I mentioned, there are only a few uh, experiments done in uh, this flock head physics in the condensed matters. So in like nine years ago at MIT, Nugetics group showed that the uh, replication of this Dirac uh, band of the topological insulator, uh, bismuth selenide. So they uh, shine pulse light of 30 terahertz, which is mid IL. This is optical light with the polarization. Then, uh, with the uh, this pulse duration of like a, a hundred, like a few femtoseconds, then they can measure the band structure very fast. Time resolved RPS technique. They can see at when the pulse hit the sample, they see this flock, uh, the carpet. Although they are faint, but they exist here and here. This is original band, this is copied one. But the thing is they, uh, because the, the light was pulsed, 
when the pulse ended, the quantum state will get back to the equilibrium state. So they will re, uh, come back to this uh, original band structure within a hundred femtosecond. So they can only uh, maintain this uh, pocket state for a hundred of femtosecond. Um, so the technical reason was that for seeing this focus with uh, state, you have to uh, apply very strong, strong light. Uh, to have the strong light, the light should be pulsed. They compress the energy into a very short period of time to make the electric field very strong. But even if you have very strong continuous light, if you shine the light, the sample will be melted due to the heating. So the reason why they needed very high electric field was that the effective uh, Black blockhead interaction strength is basically normalized with the frequency square. So that means if you use very high frequency of the light, then you will need even higher electric field. So one way to get around it uh, is to use much lower microwave um, frequency, which is microwave in, in, in our case. So the frequency of the optical light was 30 terahertz, but we can use for example, 10 gigahertz light, which is 3,000 times smaller frequency. That means we need 3,000 times, 3,000 to the square, which is about 10 to the seventh times smaller electric field. That means 10 to the 14 times smaller heating. So we may be able to shine continuous microwave without heating, without heating the sample too much and, and observe this flocket system. But one downside is that the, if the frequency is lower, then the energy gap between the state will be also reduced by 3,000 times. Do you need 3,000 times better energy resolution to see this quantum state? Because, so that's why we developed this uh, spoken ducting tunneling spectroscopy device. So basically, this is an STM measurement, uh, but we implemented this tunneling spectroscopy in the device level. Uh, because STM is very hard, <laughs> at least to me. Um, but it's known that it's a very um, hard technique, if, especially if you want to STM at very low temperature in the high magnetic field with the microwave, the, the difficulty uh, grows rapidly. So our idea is to mimic the STM spectroscopy to see the density of state as a function of energy in the device level. Although we cannot scan it, we can we have to fix a certain point, but if you are okay with it, we can use it. So there are many interesting at, attempts to do this kind of spectroscopy. For example, they can use a boron nitride as a tunneling barrier between the two graphene to do some inter uh, interlayer tunneling spectroscopy. Uh, and then uh, in 2017, in Pablo's group at MIT, they use boron nitride tunneling barrier and the graphite as a tunneling electrode to probe the density of state of the graphene, which is sandwiched by two spoken forming so-called Josephson junction. And they, they, they were able to see the, uh, uh, this underbound state that I will explain shortly. Uh, so our idea was to use the naturally formed uh, tunneling barrier. So, as an experimentalist, uh, when you want to study the spoken doctor graphene, like a hybrid structure, you want to make a good contact. You make, we want to make a good spoken doctor contact to the graphene such that, so that the spoken activity from the spoken doctor can be induced into the graphene well. Without it, without, with the very bad contact, the graphene will not know the existence of the spoken doctor, spoken doctor. So that's why they always put this titanium as an adhesion layer between graphene and aluminum. Uh, without it, with direct deposition of aluminum onto graphene, you will end up having this huge uh, energy barrier, which of three EV with this about one angstrom. This is a calculation, but um, at least ex experimentalists, what we see is that when you put aluminum superconductor directly to the graphene, it doesn't make a Josephson junction. It doesn't show the induced uh, superconductivity. So that's why people use this titanium layer, which has a delocal more delocalized electron, which can marry this aluminum and the carbon well. But our idea is to use just a, not use titanium and hope that that barrier act as a tunneling barrier, right? So when people when people uh, 
when we usually make a good aluminum ton of, uh, aluminum contact to the graphene, what we do is first we encapsulate the graphene with boron nitride to make the graphene very clean. And we partially open a PMMA window and we etch it and expose this uh, fresh edge of the graphene. And then we deposit titanium to uh, uh, promote good adhesion of aluminum. And then put the aluminum, then the aluminum spoconductivity can be well, well induced into the graphene. But uh, without titanium, it may form a bad contact, but that's what we want, actually. So that's what we want. We want bad contact uh, with this well-defined tunneling barrier. And we try a couple of times, and it actually worked as a tunneling barrier. Uh, I will show you the best uh, 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 data. So this is the graphene encapsulated boron nitride, and the blue ones are the tunnel contact aluminum, which means that we directly deposit aluminum on the side of the graphene, not without any titanium addition layer. Okay? Then we were able to see that this uh, B, uh, BCS like a uh, density of state of the superconductor of aluminum. Like uh, in this case, aluminum is a superconductor, so it has this non-trivial density of state, and the graphene is just normal metal for this case. And this is tunneling between these two states. So basically, we should see the density of state of the aluminum quasiparticle uh, density of state, and that was well fitted with the BTK fitting with a reasonable spontaneity gap with, ele with reasonable electron temperature. And this Dines parameter, tentative minus 14, fourth, uh, actually uh, represents how, how good the tunneling contact is, actually. This Dines parameter provides the quasi-particle lifetime for the spectroscopy. So the longer, the better. So. That's like the time that this quasi, the quasi particle can stay as a quasi particle inside of the superconductor. Uh, but anyway, what I want to tell you is that side tunneling contact idea actually works, and it, it gives a reasonably good tunneling contact. Uh, yeah. So this is our superconducting STM basically. Uh, although we can <laughs> move around, yeah. And then uh, we. For now, the graphene is just a normal metal, but now we want to induce the superconductivity inside of the graphene, okay? And try to see that effect by using this tunneling, a tunneling probe. So back uh, now going to the underbound state. So when the superconductor in, in contact with normal metal, the superconductivity can be like smeared into the normal metal so that the normal metal can attain some some degree of superconductivity. So when these two superconductors are sandwiching one normal metal, then they can their wave function can be overlapped and it can form so-called Josephson coupling. Then the supercurrent can flow if even the normal metal is not superconductor. So in more microscope point of view, this is basically a particle in a box. So in a quantum physics 101, we learned that the particle in a box, so when the electron trapped inside of the, this uh, normal barrier, one round trip uh, will accumulate two KL phase difference. And when they uh, become two pi n, then they form sending wave, right? Then that's basically your uh, eigen energy. That's why your eigen energy is uh, quantized with one of one of our L's at n squared, right? In just this injunction, this is similar. The doctor has a spawn of being yeah. Although they are not just a normal barrier, they are spawn doctor barrier. For electron, which is just uh, one electron inside the normal metal, cannot get into the superconductor. Energy is smaller than the gap, but the only way they can do, the only way they can get into the superconductor is grab another electron, which has a different energy, opposite energy, so that this pair of two electrons forms an energy zero Cooper pair which can get into the superconductor, but that will result in reflection of this hole because this electron grab one electron inside of this uh, below the Fermi level, this process will reflect hole state. And that hole state will go to the left superconductor and undergoes the whole version of the under reflection. Then it will come back to one electron. So this is one round trip. When it does, 
that it requires this kind of spoconducting phase, this dynamical phase, and that is related to the spoconducting phase they they acquire when it undergoes the under reflection. So when this uh, quantization rule uh, becomes to uh, hold, the uh, there is allowed energy state which is described in this way. This is basically bound state, but because of this uh, is under reflection, is we call under bound state. And they are their energy spectrum changes as a function of phase difference between these two superconductors, phi, and with a two pi period periodicity. Yeah. This is an uh, underbound state. And we were first try to see this underbound state, and then we will study about the flow cast state of this underbound state. We made this kind of device. The graphing is enriched by these two superconductors are basically shorted by swimming green. Uh, because we want to apply magnetic field to control the phase difference between these two conductors. Um, then we put another aluminum uh, tunnel in contact to the side of the graphene to probe the density of states uh, inside of this graphene, which is a part of the graphene Josephson junction. Okay. This is our uh, spin, uh, device. This is an uh, actual SCM picture. So this is the results. As a function of magnetic field, we change the phase difference of these two superconductors as uh, to pi, and the DIDV, DIDV curve, the differential conductance, uh, shows this peak, and that peak oscillates as a function of magnetic field or uh, the phase difference. That and that happens when this sharp density of state of superconducting probe matches with field underbound state. Or this way, the field uh, spoconducting uh, peak uh, density of state field state uh, matches with empty state of the under bound state. So that two peaks corresponds to this uh, under bound state upper and lower under bound state. It always comes in pair. There's always upper and lower. Uh, this is fundamentally because the electron uh, particle holds symmetry of the spoconductivity. It always uh, should appear uh, in this way. Due to this uh, electron, uh, the particle holes material of this window. Hi, Gilho. Uh, just, just okay. make sure. So, we, um, hi, Gilho. Just yeah. make sure we completely understanding what you're doing. So, in the yeah. DIDV plots, you are probing it um, from um, data that you are getting from your aluminum tunnel probe, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, yes. so, so I, what, I, I would have yeah. expected that um, the Andrea bound states would be very close to the aluminum. Ah. Um, boundaries, whereas your aluminum tunnel probe is ah. you know, a little bit away. Um, are, are you uh -huh. saying homogeneous ABS? Uh, yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, under bound state happens when electron goes this one round trip. So it doesn't form here, but oh, rather it forms inside of the graphene because it should go across the graphene. Um, so if you, uh, if I go, mm -hmm. hmm. so maybe, maybe if you heard about the, this under edge state in the quantum hole, yeah, then that, that appears at okay, the so interface between the quantum hole edge state and the yeah. doctor, but this is not under strong magnetic field. So one round trip happens. This is our one round trip. I see. I see. So, so, so it's a homogeneous uniform that, state. The uniform yeah, state. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But actually, that leads us a very interesting question. How, where does this uh, tunneling probe see? Does it yeah. see the density of state of this part of the graphene? Does it see this part of the graphene as well? Yeah. That's like unknown for now. We are actually doing some kind of experiment to check how, how deep this tunneling probe can see. But basically, this underbound state actually forms an entire part of the graphene for now. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, you for, for, for correcting me. Very good. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. And yeah, that's now we see the underbound state very clearly. If you remember, the underbound state uh, was measured by boron nitride as a tunneling barrier. They used the boron nitride as a tunneling barrier. They also see the underbound state. The, just the, the geometry is exactly the same, except that their tunneling uh, barrier was made by boron nitride and uh, Graphite is worked as a tunneling electrode. Um, then, but there, the unrobust is rather smeared looking. Um, I, I don't want to 
like I, I, I'm not trying to be surgical, but I think this is partly because their 2D barrier is made of boron, boron nitride, which is, which is a good insulator, but not perfect. So if you have a few defects in this 2D barrier, you will have some pinholes, then you will lose your energy resolution. Also, the graphite gate is normal metal versus our tunneling electrode is superconductor. So using superconductor as a tunneling probe electrode is actually beneficial. The reason is following. So when you have STM, there's a normal metal tip. You can do the STM, of course. You can study this density of state of niven diselenide using normal metal tip, but you can also use superconducting tip to probe the niven diselenide density of state. But this superconducting tip has very sharp density of state in energy so that it has better energy resolution because only when this sharp peak align with some features in this unknown material, they will show the enhanced DIDB curve. So STM has very sharp peak, sharp tip in the real space. But what I'm saying, the sharp here means sharp density of state in the energy space. So they have sharp peak in the density of state in energy space. So they have better energy resolution. So this is the uh, this is the example. If you measure the density of state the selenide using normal metal, they will show this kind of density of state. But if they use the Spokana King tip, their peak will be much sharper. Although their data will be convoluted with the density of state of the Spokana King tip, but so that this DIDB curve doesn't tell you the density of state of diselenite directly, but the good part is that their energy resolution is better. So I think this, because of these two regions, the, the tunneling barrier is actually made up of this naturally forming uh, barrier. And also the fact that we use the superconducting tunneling, uh, superconducting probe, we think we have a better energy resolution, we think. Then we, uh, this is just a temperature dependence to sanity check. This is really coming from this uh, superconductivity. So it was uh, well fitted. Uh, the interesting thing is that when the temperature is high enough, you will see additional peak here. And this is because we now have some thermal activation of this underbound state, upper underbound state is partially filled so that at higher inner temperature, we start to see the empty state as well. Yeah, which is well uh, replicated by the theory uh, by Professor Ki Leong Chiu. Okay, now we shine microwave. Now we shine light. Okay, uh, the, now we just shine the microwave with just uh, this in a very lousy way. This is just a poor man's uh, experiment. We just put the RF line just hanging near the sample one centimeter away. This is our RF antenna. This is not well designed. This is just a poorly coupled, but still it was good enough for us to see some effect. So when we shine microwave, we start to see the splitting or application of the underbound state. This, when the power is small, this is the power dependence of this uh, DIDB curve. We fix the magnetic field at the center uh, at the phase difference zero. So now we see two uh, underbound state, upper and lower one. And we increase the power of the microwave. It start to show us this uh, additional state here while the original underbound state peak decreases. And that was a well expected. So this magnetic view, when you have no uh, microwave, no light, you have this uh, field underbound state and the empty underbound state. When you shine microwave with a certain frequency, that frequency will determine the distance between this focus state and the original state, but their intensity will determine how much their state are copied. Yeah. So when the power increases more and more, the spectral density of a focus state increases while the uh, spectral density of the original state decreases, such that this uh, spectral density sum should be always constant, regardless of the power of the microwave. Yeah, this, that's how it should uh, be. Uh, and and what we are seeing is that quantitatively uh, showing it. Um, 
I just uh, put a, a slight cut here, the DIDB curve. This is our low data. The blue one, you see this origin on the bound state and this copy state appears here and here. If we subtract the back, uh, uh, background, we, uh, it's easier to see the Bobcat state. And the distance between these peaks is about 50 micro EV, which is HF when the F is 12 gigahertz that we used for them. Uh, we used. And good thing is that our energy resolution was 20 micro EV, which is smaller than, better than the energy spacing, so that we were able to see the clear peak. And uh, to, to, for a sanity check, we also changed the uh, magnetic field and see if this flow cat, a uh, copied state, also oscillated with as a function of magnet magnetic field. Um, so this is the again the magnetic field sweep, the oscillation of underbound state that we sh I showed very first uh, here. Uh, sorry, here this is oscillation of underbound state as a function of magnetic field, original underbound state, oscillate, but also the replicated flow cat states also oscillate as a function of magnetic field, and this is just show that. The, this is really coming from the you know, copy state of the original underbound state. If they are coming from some artifact, then there is no reason why they should also oscillate as a functional magnetic field. This is just a sanity check uh, measurement, okay, as, as expected. So um, this is, uh, we, we checked the sum row uh, that, as I told you, the the spectral density of plot state and the original state should be always the same. So I just integrated the DIDB curve like this. Um, then this is just uh, integral of DIDB curve. They are pretty much uh, constant as a function of power. Uh, you see a slight decrease of the density of uh, this uh, spectral integral. Uh, but this is just because the our energy window for integration is limited by experimental uh, due to the experimental reason. We so when the power is higher and higher, then you will have higher or higher uh, flow cast state at higher energy, and their flow cast state appear like outside of our integral range. Then we cannot take a, account it. So they are leaking outside of this integral range. So that's just uh, that. So it, basically they are uh, constant. So we were able to confirm the uh, this kind of sum role. And, and uh, I, I just want to emphasize that this measurement was done with the continuous microwave. This is not pulse light, this is continuous light. And we measure the density of state for like, uh, it, we, we don't have to be hurried. Like uh, we can just uh, sweep the DIDB curve slowly enough and just uh, see the details of the uh, density of state. And so because of that, we were able to show uh, this sum role uh, quantitatively. Uh, yeah. uh, okay, so if you, yeah, the further analysis was done with the uh, uh, Killian. Um, so we use this, uh, expected power dependence. So the spectral density of flock state is expected to follow the vessel function square. So this beta was, if you remember, the normalized electric field by the frequency square. So this is basically the, your power of the light and the vessel function. The theta here is uh, represent the polarization of your light, but because because we use this lousy uh, antenna method, we think our light is unpolarized. We didn't control the polarization at all. So we just average it out, the polarization. We just assume the, uh, the light was unpolarized. And then this uh, theory expected this kind of density, uh, the spectral density as a function of power. And it was, uh, uh, Okay, the fitting was okay, and uh, if you see this uh, light cut along the energy, it, it looks much better. You see this uh, red red dots are data, and the blue black lines are the theoretical uh, fitting. Okay. 
Um, so uh, one thing I want to emphasize is that uh, our electric field, uh, according to the fitting, the electric field was order one volt per meter uh, compared to, it's much smaller than the 10 to the 7th volt per meter at the, with the optical light. Okay. Uh, this uh, details of the theoretical calculation. So we assume that uh, delta function like underbound state and also uh, this uh, smeared uh, background coming from the proximity in this spectroconductivity. Uh, that's the details. Um, uh, for the more sanity check, we change the frequency of the light and see that the gap between the flocking states actually also changes as a function of frequency. If you if we decrease the frequency of the light, the separation between these peaks uh, shrinks and to the level that we almost lose the resolution because of this uh, energy, uh, 20 micro EV energy resolution. So it well uh, follows uh, this HF uh, function as expected. Uh, one thing I want to note that is uh, this replication of uh, quantum state by shining light can be also explained by so-called Tian Golden effect. Uh, basically, this is about in um, this inelastic uh, tunneling. So when you when your electron tunnels through the barrier, this electron that is tunneling through can absorb energy from the photon or emit en uh, photon energy out. So it can have some in sorry in inelastic, so it, the energy is not conserved because of this uh, photon-electron interaction. So that can also give us this replication of the spectral density. But uh, at least for our estimation, the electric field that we need to see this replication with the Tian Golden effect was like a few orders of larger than we used, like then then few orders of magnitude larger than we actually used with uh, light power. Okay. I see. So, so um, could, could I ask a quick question. What, what determines that electric field then? Um, so, uh, so in your- Of the, yeah. this, uh, of the so we order. estimate an electric field. Uh, we estimate an electric field uh, in many ways, actually. Uh, we know the power of the microwave we shine. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is a little technical, but we had a Josephson junction right next to this Josephson junction. Yeah. And we were able to measure the so-called Shapiro step. Uh, the Shapiro step is uh, the resonance between the AC Josephson relationship and the microwave. But basically, you measuring this Shapiro step, which appears as a IB curve step in yeah. the IB curve, the current voltage characteristics, we were able to estimate what actual electric field the Josephson junction is feeling. And that was about one volt per meter. And uh, with this uh, strength of the electric field, if we apply this Tian Golden effect, we should not be able to see any replication with our yeah, experimental resolution. I see. No, no, that's I, one I, argument. I, yeah, I, yeah that, that, that's an excellent answer. And I, I, I completely um, uh, believe you on that. I, the, the, uh, the, the question I was just trying to ask was more of a phenomenological physics point of view. Mm -hmm. um, so um, in, in your Fouquet and Dre um, picture, yeah. in, in, so, in picture, you know, you, you're able to achieve um, this kind of, you know, um, replica bands and, and stuff like that uh, at lower um, microwave electric field. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, what's so special about that structure as compared with the structure on the right hand side? Um, um, so uh, I think the so fundamental the difference the between these the two. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I, 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 I think I got your question. Uh, I, I think I understand your question. So the fundamental difference between these two scenario is to which electron the light couple to. Ah, uh, yes. So the flocket one, it should be the electron in the, inside of the graphene. The Tian Golden one is the electron tunneling through the barrier. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yes. the the flocket case, we control the density of state of the graphene cell, but the Tian Golden is just the inelastic scattering, which is, which was uh, actually quite 
widely studied in 1970 or even 1960 when, when right. people studied this tunneling that's right Josephson junction um, right. they they yeah. studied it uh, they studied this Tian Goldie effect um, yeah so that's one fundamental well, yeah, difference yeah the thing I was trying I to ask was 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 what what was allowing you to get to lower powers so is it because yeah. caffeine has very high group velocity and the and and the states inside the insulator are very flat or something and so therefore to to you know so I there's probably a parameter there's probably your beta um, parameter or something um yeah that, uh, so that, yeah that will we'll determine basically so, um you know uh the amount of power you need to to go so so, so it could be because in, in in my mind the tin gordon effect and actually this Floquet and Dreyfus stuff are quite quite similar yeah they're they're quite similar yeah right. Um, so in so for uh, for cat, the physics should be governed by this beta, yes. which is given electric field divided by frequency square, and the parameter for the Tian Golden is not necessarily th in this form. So it's maybe so uh, maybe maybe I don't know. Maybe we can uh, see the parameter dependence to differentiate these two effects. I probably. see. I see. Yeah. Very good. Thank you yeah. very much. Yeah. 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 It's from yeah. here. Yeah. So that's that. So we think we observed the Floquet state. Uh, uh, thanks to the theoretical calculation, the parameter looks all reasonable and good. Um, but the thing is what we can do even more. So it, we, we already uh, did something uh, important, I think, which it was we observed this Floquet state in a continuous light. So even shining microwave continuously, the, the sample was not heated too much so that we were able to measure the differential conductance in a very high accurate energy resolution so that we were able to see the details of the spectrum so that we was able to probe, for example, the sum roll, for, I think for the first time, in, at least in the condensed matter system. But the th second thing is that we can, we expect even higher beta. So when we are feeding here beta, the beta was from zero to up to like one or something, order one. But um, if we we recently uh, make this RF antenna in a better way, so we put antenna on chip so that the coupling between antenna and the sample was extremely enhanced. And we then we were able to see many, 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 many flow cast states. So now we see what like we see it to the second order, but now we see like a, like 10 or 20 flow cast states and see many things. That means this means that the beta was is almost order of 10 or 20 now. The beta, which is the interaction parameter, is much larger than one. Uh, at least from uh, from Professor Gilliam Cho, who is, uh, uh, he, he, he think that there is no, it's not still possible to calculate this uh, flow cast state this high beta. The, this uh, calculation in the non-equilibrium quantum state is not trivial. And uh, if we have beta much smaller than one, we have some approximation. But if that beta is much larger than one, then we are going so-called, I, I would say, strong coupling regime, then the physics can be totally different. Uh, that's one way we are aiming for. So I think because we use this low frequency of the light, we think we can apply stronger electric field to get higher beta without heating the sample. And furthermore, we can make this kind of strong coupled, for strong power regime flock has stayed like a steadily, uh, continuously. So we can do something something more uh, probably. Uh, I'm not clear yet, but uh, one interesting aspect uh, is that maybe we can replace the graphene as topological material. Then we, are, we will end up re re replicating the Majorana state possibly. 
yeah <laughs> and, and braid this kind of thing in the parameter space that's one 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 interesting idea uh, in fact uh in two three years ago in uh, Jakob uh Amir Jakob's group at MIT they made a similar device actually from they used the mercury telluride cotton mercury telluride which is known to be spin quantum spin hole 2d basically 2d topological insulator made into the Josephson junction it, they also put the panel tunneling contact on the side and they while they are applying magnetic field in 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 plane they were able to see this zero bias anomaly which is the signature of the underbound state and maybe we can shine microwave and replicate this state and do something interesting yeah more uh yeah so some uh, we we developed this uh superconducting tunnel contact uh, uh technique which is mimicking the stm but uh, although we cannot move around uh, uh, and then we observe this uh, underbound state formed in the graphene Josephson junction. When we shine the microwave, thanks to this low frequency of the microwave, we were able to see this flock state continuously without heating the device too much. And then we were able to confirm the sum rule of this uh, from the spectrum we measured from the spoken uh spectroscopy. Yeah, and this kind of technique, the tunneling contact method can be also applied to many other 2D materials. Not, it's not necessarily uh, only applied, uh, applicable to the graphene. It can be applied to topological insulator as well. Yeah. Hey, thank, thank you for your attention. Thanks very much. Uh, um, this is a very interesting talk. Um, so are, are there any questions from the, the audience? Just, um, maybe just to start us off, um, let me just um, kind of ask the following question. So, so these interior bound states, you know, in principle, I guess, um, are supposed to be infinitely sharp, right? So they, uh, yeah. Uh, but then you, you see some width, and so this means that there's some coupling to um, some kind of disorder or some kind of yeah. bath or some, some something that's um, going on yeah. with 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah. so actually, in the in the Floquet literature, at least in the theoretical literature, um, there mm -hmm. are um, uh, large arguments. Um, let me not arguments, but you know, um, people basically understand that uh, the Floquet distribution function. This when when mm -hmm. when when you um try to drive uh, an electronic system um, in a periodic fashion. Mm -hmm. um you you will get a distribution function and that distribution function um can be actually highly complicated it really depends mm -hmm. on both mm -hmm. how you drive as well as the um couplings the uh the, what kind of bath you use what what mm -hmm. what what specifics of, of those things and you can get um wildly different things and i i wonder if you considered any of these issues because it seemed um, the, so, so, so one reason why um, people haven't been able to resolve some of these questions is because there were no real experiments to actually um, guide the theorists. So the the, mm -hmm. the theorist was just you know kind of uh, going off into the real land. Um, and so, so I wonder if you considered using your experiments to be able to to constrain um, to make statements mm -hmm. about the type of uh, relaxation um, that affects the electronic distribution mm -hmm. in a different flow system. Mm. That's very, very, very interesting comment, actually, and question. Um, yeah, I, I wish we can do something to guide uh, the theorists uh, and, 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 and then say something about uh, of, uh, this, uh, this many, many different kind of uh, models, I guess. Uh, but yeah, but uh, we don't have. Uh, so first of all, we don't much have um uh we, we don't know much about this um uh, the scene like uh, this field that that's the that's the thing that we so we need to learn what has been discussed like as you briefly mentioned there are the different like uh stories with different coupling different like a uh, bath coupling this kind of thing but what what uh what i want to Remind you is that this, unlike this uh, atomic system, which is fully like a well closed system, this is open system. The electron is always coupled to the electron, uh, the phonon, 
with electron phonon coupling. So this is open system. So this is very different from AMO system. So I think there is a possibility that this um, this whole like different physics uh, is there uh, in so-called open quantum systems, yeah. non kilovolt quantum system, That's right. uh, which is even complicated. I guess I, I don't know. I have you know, no that, idea. That, that, that's actually. Um, Precisely the point. I think that that's precisely yeah. the point of the Floquet yeah. um, um, theoreticians. Um, so they yeah. they um, they say it's an open quantum system, and it all yeah. it really mm. depends on how how open it is. Like you know how you yeah, yeah, couple yeah. with yeah. The external thing, and so that's why yeah. there are yeah. ten different ways of of getting the electron distribution yeah. function. And this yeah. it's like it I feels see. like experiment can guide the theory. Yeah. That's all. Just a comment. I see. Yeah, so to answer short, we have no idea <laughs> what, what we can say. Um, so we the, the the this is open system and uh, we need to I, I really need uh like a like a guide from the theorist and the expert in this field. I'm very new to this field and uh, I really wish to have uh, the help from the uh, expert in this field and uh, what direction we have to go more. Um, the obvious way is we can apply strong electric fields, so we can go higher, better. So then what? Then what What we need to see? That's also a very open question as well. So yeah, we are widely open as the system is open. <laughs> okay. um, more questions from other people. Let me ask a technique question, maybe. Um, so, so you know, it seemed like um, this technique that you have was very nice. Um, so you were really exploiting the Andrea bound states and using these tunneling contacts. In fact, actually, I think it was primarily because you're using these tunneling contacts, aluminum tunnel probes, that enabled your super super good um, resolution in energy. Uh, so I I wonder if. Um, if somehow you didn't have your Andrea bound states and you just looked at, I don't know, graphene or something, you mm -hmm. know, there are all these proposals for gap opening in graphene via circularly mm -hmm. polarized light. Um, yeah, yeah. Could, could, mm -hmm. could, could, could your technique also study those gap opening yeah. proposals? Oh, of course, you know, there's, there, in the steady state um, and maybe probe things like, you know, it's um, topological indexes and stuff. Because here you're only looking at the replica bands, but you know the idea yeah, with yeah. locally topological insulators was to change the band yeah. topology. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's very very nice uh, comment in the question as well. In the same time, so yeah, yeah, people have thought about uh, and also partially showed this um, this uh, opening a topological gap inside of the graphene by shining circularly polarized light. Okay, right? And. There, and yes. uh, this Mac Kleiber, uh, Mac Kleiber from Mac Kleiber and he's now. Uh, I think Columbia. he's now in uh, Colombia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's joined at Max Planck. At, 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 yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, so yes, we should be able to see the gap opening of the graphene when the light is circularly polarized onto the graphene. Um, but uh, measuring the edge edge current can be simply can be done by this um, this electrode only contact to the graphene. So the difference would be the in the frequency. The previously mostly optical range mm -hmm. should be so that they should use the pulse light. But if we shine circularly polarized microwave, even the ah so the thing uh, that we, the in principle we can apply circular polarized microwave continuously to make to open this topological gap continuously, which is very beneficial for the measurement. But the thing is that this gap opening will be order of 50 micro e e electron volt. That's right. The unfortunate thing is the the disorder level inside of the graphene is order of one milli eV. So the disorder fluctuation energy scale is mm, like 20 times larger than the um, microwave energy. So we should not be able to see this uh, gap opening clearly inside of the graphene. I see, but you can't maybe that's, that's you know, ramp news. up your, uh, your your power. Maybe uh, the power you, you, can. You're, you're still you're still being helped by your small omega, right? So you're going to small omega. 
yeah. the microwave regime, and that's that's far smaller than what MacGyver and Andrea Cavalieri uh -huh. used. Uh -huh. um, so you don't need to go to such gigantic powers. Um, uh -huh. um, um, so so can you ramp up your power to be able to open open up a larger gap? So the power, the frequency determines the gap size. So it's two things, right? It's the electric field strength and it's the frequency, right? So it's 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 basically e squared over omega, right? Um, mm, mm. So the gap size is determined the frequency, but the electric field power determines the the, uh, the, the spectral density. It doesn't change the gap size of the sample. Um, sorry, it's uh, where is it? I mean, circularly polarized open gap. You know, so so in, in your case, you won't open a gap because you don't have circularly polarized light. It's just um, you only get replicas. But in the graphene case, when you apply circularly polarized light, you 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 open up a gap that goes as e squared over um, omega. Uh, but gap, okay, it's just sorry. yeah, yeah. Sorry, the gap is hf. The beta is e divided by omega squared. Right, the gap size, gap size of this uh, uh, gap size that we open is determined by HF. Yeah, yeah. So I think I, I, I actually think we're, we're talking about slightly different things. I think you're talking mm. about the mm. these um these replicas, and you're indeed correct. The the replicas mm. are determined by beta, and you're completely right mm -hmm. about that. Um, there's a slightly different physics that happens in graphene. Um, when you open mm. up a gap at the Dirac point, so the, the, there's a gap there that, that that arises. Oh, maybe at the second right, right. Not. Um, and, and that's that's the gap uh, that you open up in. in yeah, maybe time. I didn't, maybe I didn't read the paper right. So I need. To... <laughs> okay. Sure. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. I will. I will look it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, there is a, also even even the the gap size. It, the, this frequency is important. We can go terahertz, not go to. Optical light, yes. but we sure. can go to terahertz so that we can have a uh, big enough HF while the, the electric field can be continuous. We can yeah. do this kind of thing as well. Yeah. 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 So Very I good. also collaborated with Eric Hennison from uh, Washington University, who is an mm -hmm. expert in the terahertz in the millikelvin range. So I'm very we are we are actually working for making terahertz think about the detector using the graphene Joseph's Young. It's a slightly different topic, but it can be very interesting routes and yeah. yeah 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 i think that would yeah. be excellent okay um any more questions it seems like i was the only one asking questions so especially from students okay um last call last call for questions you know you get to talk to um you know, Professor Gilhoui. Okay, great. So um so I won't I won't uh I won't uh pressure anyone to ask any questions, but but um uh thank you very much. Uh, it was very, very interesting. Um let me just uh stop the recording.